Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today we have something different. Um, yeah, I like all kinds of uh, electronics and uh, car electronics is also uh, one of those. I have a bunch of uh, OBD2 stuff that uh, I sometimes play with. And uh, now I have something else. It's a tachometer from a Corvette C3. It's from the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, yeah, usually when they don't work, I already uh, look a lot on the internet. Uh, they just replace the board uh, because some of the chips that are on it are, uh, are not available anymore because it's like 40 years old. Uh, but I just want to be sure it is only the board because, and I need to see if it is the board because we have some old capacitors, we have some diodes. So maybe those simple components can also be broken and then it's a pity because these boards are easy available in the US but here in Europe it's a, it's a bit harder to get so you pay a ton of uh, shipping. So uh, these boards probably go around 100 euros. So that is a lot if you can find a simple component for a few dollars. No? So uh, first we see uh, if it's an easy, easy fix or not. And uh, I also like to see if the, yeah, I don't know if it's a little motor or it's just some sort of coil that pushes the needle, if, uh, if that is working or not. Because if that already is broken, then you can replace the board and then it's still not working. So uh, what I want to do, uh, first, how these meters work, they just have a, a power connection of 12 volts because it's a car. And then there is one uh, connection in the back that goes to the coil of the uh, of the ignition. So uh, the ignition coil, coil just uh, put the, uh, well this, this signal wire just listens to the, the coil that gets the pulses and the pulses are for the sparks and it's just yeah before the coil before it goes to the distributor and goes to your uh, spark plugs. So uh, it will spark uh, a few rounds more, of course, than, than the turns of the engine because we have multiple cylinders. Uh, this specific one is uh, for an uh, eight cylinder. It's a V8, so it's actually uh, yeah, too little, well, too, too big for cylinders because they probably spark at the same time. So let's say you have four sparks for its uh, complete engine cycle, but it's a four stroke. So that means uh, instead of one spark per round, you actually have two. Yeah? You don't have four because half of the uh, half of the thing of the engine, because it's four stroke is just doing nothing. So it doesn't need a spark in the second uh, round. So we need to multiply by two. So let's say if it's 3000 revs, that is per minute. So we divide by 60, so that would be 50 hertz, a pulse of 50 hertz. But we have four cylinders that half the time do nothing. So that means two, so we need to multiply by two. So let's say if we put 100 hertz, it should go to, to 3000. Um, so let's see what, uh, what happens. So what we need, of course, is a 12 volts. I have here, we need a signal generator. We have here, well, 12, 13 volts, it doesn't matter too much. So I put 13 volts because the battery is probably uh, 13 and a bit. So we can first put 12 volts on the meter. Well, it's perfectly labeled. It says ground, so we put the ground pin. It says 12 volt, so we put the 12 volt pin. Well, nothing happens yet. Yeah, the zeroing is always uh, not to worry about. Uh, let's see, we put. A 50 hertz to start with. No. Uh, I want the amplitude of 12 volts because it's probably 12 volts peak. Okay, that should be it. I 
put one to ground and just add it and then I have my coil connection which is here so and you already see that the uh, needle is going down uh, let's see if I go to zero hertz then it should go to zero Yeah, the needle doesn't go to zero. That's a, that's a common problem. You can just pull out the needle and push it back. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, now I'm going to put some more signal. And you see the hertz go up. And actually the meter goes down. So that is a bit weird. And now I'm at 260 hertz, which is a lot. And then, poof. Uh, that is weird so something is definitely wrong but it does respond so we know the needle is good i'm now at 260 hertz which is crazy because that would be like 7000 rpm and then i go to so 260 and then i go to 270 and it lifts a little bit then i go to 280 and then indeed it goes to 6000 290 hertz 300 hertz yeah that is crazy that is this this would be and then if i go higher 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 no it doesn't go poof down okay well let's look at the electronics uh, I like to see first uh, if there is a uh, pulse. Yeah, what I want to see, the, the coil pulse goes first uh, through a resistor. It also looks like a little uh, IC, I will show you later, I take the circuit board off. Uh, I think it's like 3.3k uh, or something. And uh, then it goes through a diet. And then there is a little capacitor. So I'm going to measure before the resistor after the resistor and then we can see if there is still enough signal left from uh, this pulse because maybe it could be a problem in the capacitor if uh, capacitors do age and then uh, yeah they can short circuit or just not work properly and then maybe there is not enough signal because the IC is a, a frequency voltage converter so it's just counting the pulses and the more pulses there are the higher the voltage and then the meter starts measuring uh, more so uh, that's why if you order a board it is really a replacement board there is no exchange system because these components are just too old so uh, it's just people that designed uh, a new one because yeah you have uh, also new uh, frequency voltage converters uh, that are now easy to get so uh, they just redesigned the board and, but in the end it does exactly the same um, so I'm trying to measure here on the oscilloscope if we can see uh, some signal. Okay, um, I have now a little setup. Uh, the, 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 the needle itself is connected with uh, three uh, pins, and all the pins get, uh, get the voltage, and that changes with the frequency, and that, that kind of seems to work. So, what I did, I put this meter on the middle pin, and on one of the outer pin, and the other outer pin, and I'm changing the frequency. And as you see, the, the power is changing on this one, the voltage, but also on this one. Only the meter is not moving. And again, and again. This one stays stable at 5. I'm not sure if that is, uh, if it should be. I don't know if I have any schematics or anything. But if I look here, 
this is dropping dropping and it seems only it drops very fast now this one is to zero volts almost this is new five and then bang four volts it just goes crazy so this one seems to adjust good because the voltage just goes up with the frequency but this one goes immediately is immediately out so it's really going in and bam and the other one is really and then pff, drops okay well i mentioned some more also uh, the balance between the coils uh, I first I measured from zero and then later I measured from uh, just pure as a comparison because it is not connected to, to ground the, the coil itself so I was just measuring between and then it means like this and then you, you should have a voltage here and a voltage here and I think when you put power here the needle goes this way if you put power here so it should be a, a, a balance now this one is pulling 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 and then that one is taking over is pulling pulling so it should kind of do the opposite of each other and it's just not doing that sometimes uh, it uh, measures between uh, 10 and 5 volts and then the other goes between 10 and 0 so one is doing a lot more than the other so I think the balance is uh, totally gone and that's why one of the coils stay powered and then it just cannot pull it to the other side until it goes to zero and then of course the other one wins and then it pulls it to that side so uh, i really think it's the problem with uh, with the board yeah, the, the the voltages are not correctly distributed over the coils to move the meter Now here we have the board, some basic uh, components here, resistors, caps, this is just a multi-resistor and uh, this is all the magic, the something 923, 7 I could not find it on the internet, but the reason that they have replaced this board is exactly this, because also for the General Motors and the old Forge, they all have the same problem. You uh, just need to replace the board because this frequency voltage converter is just uh, not there. I'm just going to play a little bit because I'm going to see if I carefully put power on the coils if the meter is moving as it should. And then at least we know that the needle is uh, good. Okay, I, I start still doubting now or, or it's nn or or because i start to doubt now about the coils because if this is the case what i think it is then i should have two coils from the middle one to here between this and this and between this and this so here i should have a resistance here i should have a resistance or other way others other like this because yeah the uh, you would not have three pins if one is floating so if i take the middle one like this and i measure on this it's a connection you can hear the beep so here the coil is working but if i measure here it is not so then i think okay we keep this one here now because this one had no connection maybe the coil is here it's also not here it's also not here so it seems that this one is loose or burn or so electronic could still be working because really i should have something here so uh, now you can see how easy it is to uh, <coughs> make the wrong conclusion um, because this meter has two coils because it has three pins so then uh, you should measure uh, at least some resistance between those pins and we measured that one was floating so uh, that's why it also makes sense if you put a higher frequency that at some point it it has enough on one field now because you one field is pushing the needle and the other one is pulling the needle 
and that should be in a in a balance that if only one one uh, is working then there is no pushing there is no pushing of the needle there is only pulling and then of course when there is enough field then at some point it will of course go immediately to the other side and there is no middle and uh, that is what happened so even though you read everywhere <laughs> replace the board replace the board i think we have here a case that it is not the board or it is not only the board let me put it like that but it did uh, when i changed the frequency it did, i did see the voltage strength uh, change and uh, yeah I, I i'm not sure where the middle of the needle is if if then both fields needs to be 50 50 on the voltage what i first thought but it could also be that that it's absolutely not the case because one is pushing and the other one is pulling and it doesn't mean that it is exactly now when the needle is in the middle that that the voltage on both sides are also uh, the same uh, same voltage so first we need to um, we need to measure from another meter because i really think that uh, one of the coils is uh, is burn or loose inside so uh, yeah we, we couldn't fix it i need more uh, parts so uh, at least uh, uh, I think I helped my friend to debug a little bit uh, what is wrong with the meter. At least only replacing the board will not fix it, I think, because one of the coils is, uh, is, is, is burned. So I think first you need to try to do that because, because I don't think it's good. You need to have the two coils connected. So uh, that's it. Thank you for watching. It was a little bit messy, <laughs> but I hope to see you next time.